Okay, uh, dear students, uh, assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Mustafa Ahmed Mirchawala and I'm going to conduct this uh, P2P revision days of F6 and today is the day one, day one, right? Uh, let me introduce you myself. Hmm, I've been teaching this F6 taxation and corporate reporting all papers like F7, SBR, F3 and ICW corporate reporting for almost last 17 years. And I'm the CEO of Mirchawala Hub of Accountancy, my institute, right? It's in Karachi, but we are providing services all over the world, almost 40 plus countries we are teaching now, right? Uh, these are the few results you can see on the screen of our last attempt, world tops as well as Pakistan tops. So in last uh, years, a lot of nationwide and worldwide positions from our students, right? Okay, now, as you all know, that these are revision days. These are not normal classes. These are revision days. So for revision days, we are running short of time. We need to we need to do summarize. We need to do everything in summarized way, right? Okay. So please keep one thing in mind. These are not normal classes. So first of all, you can see the paper format. You all know this, right? F6 paper format is section A. You ha you will have 15 MCQs, two marks each, 30 marks. Section B, you will have three OT cases at the rate 10 marks each, 30 marks. And in section C three constructed response questions, CRQs, right? One at the rate 10 marks and two question at the rate 15 marks each. Now, normally in section A, you may get question from anywhere, from any area they can give you the question, right? Okay. In section B, these three OT cases normally, normally comes from three areas, CGT, IHT, inheritance tax and value added tax, okay? And in section C, the last two questions of 15 marks each, one comes from individual taxes, individual taxes like uh, uh, trading income, employment income, and the mixture of these. And one question comes from a 15 marks come from corporation tax, from corporation tax, right? Okay, now, and the passing marks is 50 marks. Passing marks is 50 marks, you know, all the standard. Now, what's the passing rate? Average passing rate, word global average passing rate of this paper is around 45 to 50%, which is very, very good, which is very excellent, okay? So because of this good passing rate, there's a highly likelihood that you can clear this paper in first attempt and you will for sure, right? Now, before we move on to the practical area, some exam time, some, some instructions I would like to give you. First of all, as this is the paper of learning, you know, in F6, in this TX paper, there are many small, small things you have to learn. Very lot of, lot of small things you have to learn. So how can you learn? By making an exam folder, this thing, this thing. If you, if you maintain exam folder, you can do it. What is exam folder? Just listen. After studying each and every, every chapter, make the summary, make the summary of your own, make your summary of that chapter in one page and put it, in the exam, put it in the exam file, okay? At the end of second chapter, make the summary again and put it in the file. Now, for example, if there are 15 chapters, you will have 15 or 16 pages summary. Now, what is the advantage of this exam folder? The first advantage, when you will write this exam folder, when you'll make this exam folder, during the making, during the writing of these uh, making summaries, during the making of summaries, you will, you will learn all these things first. Number two, Whenever in future you want to revise your topic, just open your exam folder and just have a look. You everything will be recalled, right? So through exam folder, you can you can have good grip. And in past, many students followed this and they had good results, right? Number two, read technical articles, very important, especially the CGT articles on accglobal.com and value added text articles are highly recommended plus examiner reports. Yes, always for all papers like F7, F6, F5, all papers, I recommend examiner reports, okay? Now, solve exam kit, obviously solve exam kit and past papers. Don't solve very old question. Yes, it's better. You you solve latest question like last five to six years. No, don't do solve questions before 2010, right? Okay, because at that time, the difficulty level was very easy and now the difficult level difficulty level is increasing day by day because of the challenges around the globe right now one more thing for crq questions listen this is very important advice for crq question the last 40 marks the last 40 marks there are some students they solve they practice on excel microsoft excel no it's not recommended 
it's better you practice on accglobal.com there is a proper crq area there is a proper software area where you can you can practice in the live software the software which will be coming in your exam day on your exam day okay then recalling and recapping with your friends yes if you have time it normally with uh, not in the crash course but those who do those who do normal course those who do no normal course hello 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 it's perfect now it's perfect sorry it was a little it got hanged a little bit now okay recalling and recapping means <laughs> recalling and recapping means you need to sit with your friends and you need to sit with your friends and recall everything recall everything of property income that what's what comes under the property income what comes in the employment income and you need to you need to you need to recall in front of your friends so what whoever is saying will also get get to learn the topic and whoever is listening will also learn it okay so beneficial for both now don't forget in ot cases very important line listen in ot cases the the section b you know in section b there are three ot cases and one ot cases contains five questions one ot case is equal to five question please don't sleep and if you do for example you are doing one mcq in ot cases area in section b and there are four options there are four options true and false true and false true and false four options of true and false and if you do one wrong if you do one wrong you will get zero for the whole mcq complete two mark two marks you will you will get zero so ot cases are very dangerous area in ot cases you need to you need to be very careful very cautious that if you do one mistake in that mcq the whole mcq will get wrong you will get zero okay don't forget this now when planning when planning preparation go for cash or obvious marks listen there are some areas which are which are separate from the whole course and which are easy scoring areas like cgt it's a separate area iht value added tax corporation tax cgt iht vat if you do cgt iht and vat you can easily score 35 to 40 marks because cgt iht vat three 10 10 marks questions are guaranteed from cgt iht and vat three 10 10 marks questions are guaranteed and some part of cgt also comes in mcqs as well as crq area so automatically you can easily score 35 to 40 marks similarly corporation tax 15 marks question is fixed corporation tax 15 marks question is fixed and some mcqs may come of corporation tax so overall if you do cgt iht vat and corporation tax you can easily score 60 marks similarly capital allowances it's it's also one of the very cash and very easy area from which you, you can get marks so do one thing first of all your first target is to cross 50 marks border your first target is to cross 50 marks border and for that for that go for cash and obvious marks so these areas are highly recommended right one more thing you know read claims date from exam kit if you see the beginning area of exam kit the beginning pages of exam kit there are two or three pages for claim state claim state for example there are different reliefs in cgt like rollover relief holdover relief like entrepreneur relief gift leave for these relief there are some claims date you need to claim you need to claim and there is a due date for that claims right so you must learn you must learn that claims date and these claims data are written on the beginning of your exam kit must learn those three to four pages okay then then always read the guidance notes in the requirement very important very important listen you know in the 
all examiner all examiner all markers all instructors say these, these these words that invest times on requirement invest your time in requirement so when you see the requirement listen students when you see the requirement so there are some there are some notes written in the requirement they sometimes write ignore this thing ignore pre registration in prepared sometime examiner writes that start your trading income working start your trading income working from operating profit or from profit before tax so if you skip if you forgot to read that guiding notes that guidance notes you will lose the marks okay you will lose some cash marks so be careful now small working small working can be done on the main sheet yes when you are doing when you are doing the last 40 marks so some students they don't if they don't have time for example if you are on the last 40 marks and you are running short of time so no need to do separate working for each and every items you can do working on the main sheet in the brackets you can do some workings in the main sheet in the brackets okay right and if there is a theory requirement try to write each points in a separate line if there are theoretical requirement you know some theory requirement as well better you write in separate line because if you write theory requirement in separate line it will be easier for examiner to give you marks it will be easier for your examiner to give you marks are you getting right now students we are going towards the for uh, today's uh, what are today's target i'm going to give you a quick recap of income tax computation some areas and then definitely we'll go for cdt cdt is a big area so today's our target is chargeable gain tax right now first of all first of all there are three things there are three things in taxation you all know the first thing is incomes calculation the second thing is tax calculation and the third thing is tax payment i repeat whenever somebody asks you to calculate tax your first question will be tell me what is your income so first of all we need to find the income so first step is incomes calculation first step is incomes calculation now you can see there are different types of incomes in our course property income employment income trading income interest income dividend income capital gains right listen for property income yes we need to make the pnl incomes less expenses for employment income yes there is an there is a pnl for trading income yes there is a pnl for capital gains yes there is a short 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 pnl like disposal proceed less cost but for interest and dividend income my dear students my dear students for interest income and dividend income for interest and dividend income for interest income and dividend income there are no pnl if you find interest income and dividend income in the question you will simply pick it up you will simply pick it up and you will include in non saving interest dividend interest and dividend columns right so no separate pnl working for interest income and dividend income don't forget right because these are there are normally no expenses associated with these incomes so for property income there is a pnl employment income pnl trading income pnl gains there is a pnl but for interest income and dividend income there is no pnl now fiscal year fiscal year means tax year what is the definition of fiscal year individual pays tax for fiscal year individual pays tax for fiscal year right which fiscal year we are going to study and which fiscal year going to be examined in june or september or december 2020 attempt, 2021 attempt it's 2021 fiscal year so this fiscal year starts on 6th april 2020 and ends on 5th april 21 this is your fiscal year this is your fiscal year okay now listen very simple thing whenever you are asked whenever you are asked to calculate the tax of an individual whenever you are asked to calculate whenever you are asked to calculate whenever you are asked to calculate the tax of individual whenever you are asked to calculate tax of individual three columns normally comes in your mind three columns normally comes in your mind mind the first is non saving second is interest and third is dividend look at here in non saving you write trading then employment then property these are normally very famous non saving income in interest income column you will write interest income and dividend income right first of all you will add them so you will get total income see the screen you will get total income from total income you will subtract 
interest paid from total income you will subtract interest paid what is this interest paid this interest paid means qualifying interest paid this interest paid means qualifying interest paid qualifying interest paid means if you have taken loan for certain qualifying purposes then this will be deducted from here okay now as you will deduct interest paid from here you will get net income you will get net income now wait on net income when you come to net income you will apply break you will apply break you will just stop everything and now you will listen 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 you will add all these net income you will add all these net income and you will take it here this is your total net income from total net income two things are subtracted from total net income two things are subtracted number one gross gift aid donation if available the second thing is gross personal pension contribution then you get a n i adjusted net income a n i a n i now the news is your personal allowance your personal allowance is dependent on a n i my dear students your personal allowance is dependent on a n i now wait let me tell you the timeline if your a n i is less than 100000 then then fix personal allowance of 12500 if your a n i is less than 100000 pound then 100000 or less than 100000 pound then you will have fix a n i of to, to, so you will have fixed personal allowance of 12500 now if your a n i is between 100000 125000 then reduction working then your personal allowance will be reduced gradually But then your personal allowance will be reduced gradually right and if your a n i is greater than 125000 then no personal allowance then your personal allowance is zero okay so i repeat listen there are three columns non saving interest dividend first of all you will calculate total income then you will subtract qualifying interest paid if available you will get net income you will take net income on the side side working and then you will calculate a n i through a n i you will calculate through a n i you will calculate personal allowance okay and i have just told you the timeline if if your a n i is between 0 to 100000 you will have fixed personal allowance of of 12500 if a n i is in between 100000 and 125000 your you your personal allowance will will gradually reduce will gradually reduce right and if your a n i is greater than 1 lakh 25000 you will have personal allowance zero right once you have calculated personal allowance you will write here and after deducting personal allowance you will get taxable income you will get taxable income you will get taxable income okay now once you will get once you will get students taxable income you will add all taxable income you will add taxable income and you will try to find your status you will add all taxable income and you will try to find your status you will try to find your status whether you are a basic rate tax payer or a higher rate tax payer or additional rate tax payer whether you are a basic rate tax payer if your total taxable income is less than the basic rate band if your total taxable income is less than the basic tax rate tax rate band that is 37500 then you are a basic rate tax payer if your total taxable income is in between 37500 and 150000 then you are higher rate tax payer and if you are if your if your total taxable income is greater than is greater than is greater than 1 lakh if your total taxable income is greater than 1 lakh 50000 then you are additional rate tax payer okay now these are the tax rate students students i am sure you guys know about it that for non saving 0 to 5 and 5 to 37 500 is same on uh, on a shorter note 0 to 37 500 non saving 20% then 40 then 45 yes for interest income there is for 0 to 5000 0 to 5000 0 to 5000 it's 0% 5000 to 70 37 500 is 20 then 40 then 45 and the dividend income rates are in front of you now giving you one thing wait students we have also made a whatsapp group for you guys for your help so in the chat box my admin has just shared in the chat box wait in the chat box we have shared shared the whatsapp group link you are advised to join that whatsapp group because many things i'll share uh, i'll share the slides plus some mock exam and everything i'll share on that whatsapp group so okay so it's better you join it now so 
these are the rates for non saving interest and dividend non saving interest and dividend now one thing sir for qualifying interest and personal allowance what is the priority what is the priority first always the priority is first of all you will deduct personal allowance from from non saving income if some personal allowance is left then you will go to interest and then dividend so what's your what's your order of deduction what's your order of deduction personal allowance non saving first then interest and then dividend non saving interest and dividend non saving interest and dividend okay right now you know individual tax bands you all know this individual tax bands are extended you know normal bands are normal bands are see this normal bands are 0 to 37500 and 37500 to 150 0 to 37500 and 37500 to 150 but individual tax bands are extended are extended because of two things list first of all gross gift aid donation and the second thing is gross ppc individuals tax bands are stretched extended because of two reasons the first is gross gift aid donation and the second is gross ppc don't forget okay so these bands are updated normally because of these things now what is the tax computation order tax computation order whenever you need to tax compute the tax first of all you will calculate tax on non saving first of all you will calculate tax on non saving okay then you will come well then you will compute tax on interest and then dividend what is the interest calculation what is the in how do we calculate the tax on interest for interest there is a nil rate band for interest income there is a nil rate band open your eyes open your eyes and think over it interest nil rate band nrb is depending on your tax status interest nil rate band depending on your tax status okay if you are a basic rate tax payer if you are a basic rate tax payer then your interest nrb is 1000 if you are higher rate tax payer your interest nrb is 500 and if you are additional rate tax payer then you, you don't need any nrb so no nrb available okay now what is the interest income tax computation order always always calculate nrb first always apply nrb first and then then calculate normal tax first nrb and then normal tax first nrb and then normal tax right then dividend income for dividend income also this the same order first nrb and then normal dividend income tax now there is a there is a big difference between interest income nrb please open your eyes there is a big difference between interest income nrb and dividend income nrb interest income nrb is dependent on your status but for dividend income there is don't no need to check any status you will be given fixed nrb of 2000 for dividend income for dividend income there will be a fixed nrb there will be fixed nrb there will be fixed nrb for everybody there will be fixed nrb for everybody and that is 2000 so whenever you need to calculate whenever you need to calculate you need to calculate dividend income first of all you will apply 2000 times 0% and then normal tax of dividend income okay so this is the basic basic tax competition order now the question question when to use when to use this 5000 0% band of interest income there is a listen listen look at here there is there is listen 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 there is a 0% band of interest as well there is a 0% band 0 to 5000 the interest income band is 0% now the question is when to use this band when to use this band when to use this band this is the answer this is the answer whenever whenever your non saving taxable income whenever your non saving taxable income is less than 5000 whenever your non saving taxable income is less than 5000 then you will be able to use in that case you will be able to use you will be able to use interest income interest income 0% band interest income 0% band and in that question in that question listen you will have to break your bands like this in in such questions you will have to break your bands like this 0 to 5000 5000 to 37500 37500 to 150000 in this way you will break the bands in this way you will break the band in which question listen i repeat i repeat i repeat whenever your non saving income non saving taxable income is less than 5000 then you need then you need to break your bands in such a way see the screen in such a way and in such questions in such questions interest income 5000 band will also be applied and now and now what will be the format what will be the order of interest income tax calculation now what will be the order of 
interest income tax calculation interest income tax calculation number one listen first of all you will apply 5000 band then nrb and then normal tax 5000 band then nrb and then normal tax okay right okay look have a look have a look take your time take your time please Now one more thing, we never stretch, exam focus point, we never stretch this 5000 band because of gift aid and gross PPC. Listen, for gift aid donation and gross PPC, you only stretch 37,500 and 150,000 band. Never, 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 ever, never, ever, never, ever stretch that five, this 5000 band, don't think over it. Don't think over it, right? Now. One more thing, there is a topic which we call transfer of personal allowance between spouses, Mean, means married couples and civil partners, married couples and civil partners like, for example, Mr. A and Mrs. A. Let us say Mrs. A has only total income, total income of 6,000 or 5,000. That means Mr. A's total income, Mrs. A total income is less than, is less than 12,500. So definitely Mrs. A has some unused personal allowance. Mrs. A has some unused personal allowance. So yes, Mrs. A can transfer the unused personal allowance to husband, to husband, Mr. A, okay? Now, what are the conditions? What are the conditions for this transfer? Open your eyes and be careful, be careful. Listen, the, this, top, this session is like for re a revision, recalling session for you guys. First of all, the kind of, both of them must be basic rate taxpayer, basic rate taxpayer, both of them, both of them must be basic rate taxpayer, both of them must be basic rate taxpayer, both of them must be basic rate taxpayer, that means both of them has taxable income of less than 37,500. Now, fix. 12,500 times 10%. Total personal allowance, normal personal allowance is 12,500 times 10% is 1250. Fix 1250 personal allowance can be fixed. 1250 personal allowance can be transferred, can be transferred. This is the fixed amount which can be transferred, okay? Now, the person who is receiving, the person who is receiving, like for example, Mrs. A, to Mr. A. Mrs. A is transferring the personal allowance. That means Mr. A is receiving the personal allowance. Mr. A is receiving the personal allowance will reduce his or her final income tax liability by 20%, by 1250 times 20%. Listen, listen, listen. Listen my words. The person who is receiving this 1250, the person who is receiving this 1250 will not increase, will not increase his or her personal allowance instead the person who is receiving the personal allowance will finally reduce will finally reduce his income tax liability by 250 that means the relief effect will be taken in the end the relief effect will be taken in the end the relief effect will be taken in the end the relief effect will be taken in the end, the the in the end. right Okay, so don't forget these points these conditions are very important you may get a question like this in your MCQ part Okay, so now today's main topic is here. The name of the topic is CGT, chargeable gain tax. First of all, you must know, you must know CGT is only on chargeable asset, only on chargeable asset, right? Right, there is no CGT on exempt asset. There are There is no CGT on exempt asset. Following are the list, some important exempt assets in front of you. Certain wasting chattels, certain wasting chattels, will guide you wasting chattels during my lecture. Wasting chattels are chattels with expected life less than 50 years, expected life less than 50 years. Similarly, inventory, inventory, there is no CGT on inventory. Government securities, government securities, guilds, no CGT implications. ISA, individual savings account, individual savings account, right? Qualifying corporate bonds, and then similarly, PPR, principal private residence relief. This will all, I will also discuss. So these are certain, certain exempt assets, certain exempt assets. Similarly, cars. Yes, I forgot to write cars. Okay. So 
these are some exempt acid these are some exempt acid exempt acids on which there is no cgt right okay now the question is when cgt is due when cgt is due when cgt is due when a chargeable acid is sold when a chargeable acid is sold when you sell a chargeable acid or gifted when you gift it when you gift it or damaged or destroyed i hope in your normal classes you might you must have studied these names i repeat when cgt is due when you have when when the transaction when the transaction is entitled for a cgt when you sold a chargeable asset or you gift a chargeable asset or a chargeable asset is damaged or destroyed then cgt is due then cgt is due okay right now this is the format giving uh, give me one minute to read it one minute now listen this is the format students this is the format of computation of gain the first of all we'll write dp disposal proceed less allowable cost less allowable cost now wait which cost are allowed listen the first of all original cost of purchase is allowed original purchasing cost is allowed number 2 legal cost to buy buy and sell that chargeable asset legal cost to buy and sell that chargeable asset is also allowed and the third thing is improvement or enhancement improvement or enhancement in in future if any so three cost are normally allowed number one the original purchase cost is allowed number two legal cost to buy or sell or the commission of buy or sell is allowed and number three future improvements if you bringing any improvement in that asset but listen one thing maintenance cost is not never allowed maintenance cost is never allowed because that's revenue expenditure maintenance cost is not allowed because that's a revenue expenditure that's a revenue expenditure it's not allowed it's not allowed okay now so disposal proceed less allowable cost you guess you get a chargeable gain you get a chargeable gain for example for example students you have two or three chargeable gains in one fiscal year you have two or three chargeable gains in one fiscal year in one fiscal year so what you do you will add all those chargeable gains and one time only one time in the fiscal year in the end of the fiscal year you will deduct annual exemption annual exemption what is annual exemption it's fixed amount which is allowed at the end of the year during the cdt computation and that this is 12300 annual exemption for this fiscal year 2021 is 12300 okay so after deducting annual exemption from chargeable gain you will get taxable gain now sir what is taxable gain taxable gain is the gain on which we apply tax rate directly on which we apply tax rate directly apply tax rate okay now student may ask sir what is the difference between annual exemption and personal allowance what is the difference between annual exemption and personal allowance listen personal allowance is deducted from these those columns non saving interest and dividend non saving interest and dividend those were revenue receipts those were revenue receipts but this capital gain is a world of is the world of capital receipt this capital gain chargeable gain is the world of capital receipts so annual exemption is deducted from here this is the first difference second difference personal allowance is dependent on ani personal allowance is dependent on ani and you know personal allowance is, uh, reduces also sometime we have to re reduce personal allowance or even it may become zero but annual exemption is not dependent on ani annual exemption is not dependent on ani annual exemption is not dependent on ani right okay so annual exemption is fixed 12300 right don't forget don't forget now 
these are the tax rates for gains these are the tax rates there are three types of gain the first one is rpg residential property gain residential property gain okay if you buy or sell a residential property in which you are living or which can be used as a residential property please which can be used as a residential property then such gain is called rpg the second gain gain is ng ng is a gain which is not covered by rpg and qg listen very carefully ng normal gain is a gain which is not covered by rpg and qg i will tell you what is qg 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 are the gain which is covered which is covered through entrepreneur relief entrepreneur relief the new name of entrepreneur relief is business asset disposal relief badr and investor relief please please listen again there are three types of gain the one is the first one is rpg the second one is ng normal gain and the third one is qg qualifying gain qualifying gain okay now for rpg the rates are 18 and 28% 0 to 37 500 18 and then 28 for normal gain the rate is 10 and 20 and for qg there is a flat 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 tax rate of 10% flat tax rate of 10% now order order of utilization of annual exemption for example you have these three gains in one fiscal year attention student please don't sleep you have these three gains in one fiscal year in one fiscal year that is rpg ng and qg all three gains so how will you use how will you utilize your annual exemption listen the order always utilize annual exemption in front of rpg first then ng and then qg then qg okay this is the order this is the order of utilization and you must follow it otherwise you will lose marks now what is the final order of tax competition student may ask what is the final order of tax competition because you may get a question in which there is some non saving interest income interest income dividend income and obviously gains so this is the order first of all you will compute tax on non saving then interest income then dividend income then qg then qg and finally rpg or ng in any order rpg and ng in any order rpg and ng in any order rpg and ng in any order you can do it right okay okay this is the this is how you compute the tax this is how you compute the tax and one more thing don't forget these bands 0 to 37 500 these bands are disposable bands these bands are disposable bands so normally what happens when you have non saving interest and dividend income so these incomes normally eat up normally eat up your first band so when you come to cgt when it comes to cgt normally you you lies in the second band normally you lie in the second band okay right normally now you know for qg now i'm going to discuss the qg qualifying gain the old name of old name of business asset disposal relief see the name badr the old name of this was entrepreneur relief but now the name has been changed now the name has been changed the new name is business asset disposable disposal relief previously we used to call it we used to call it entrepreneur relief now listen 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 if you want to if you want to avail if you want to avail entrepreneur relief if you want to avail this badr sorry business asset disposal relief there are two tunnels there are two tunnels there are two tunnels through these tunnels you can you can avail it through these two separate tunnels you can avail it the first tunnel sale of running business or part of running business see running business means running business means going concern going concern okay with goodwill with goodwill you you sell your running business today and holding period 24 months yes and that business must be 24 months old means you have owned that business for 24 months 24 months then you are eligible for entrepreneur relief repeat the first tunnel is you sell your running business you sell your running business or you sell part of your running business running business and you have last 24 months ownership period last 24 months from the date of sale you were the owner right now so you will get entrepreneur relief what is the second tunnel second tunnel is related to shares second tunnel is related to shares listen you sold shares and what are the condition you sold shares of trading company it it must not be a not for trading not for profit organization like acca icw it must be a trading company right 
your holding in that company your holding percentage of shares in that company must be greater than 5% greater than 5% or greater you must be doing job employee of that company you must be doing job in that company employee of that company okay and finally you holding shares for last 24 months you holding shares for last 24 24 months holding of shares is must so if you meet all these conditions if you meet all these conditions you will automatically you will automatically eligible for BADR business asset disposal relief okay so for business asset disposal relief you have two tunnels two tunnels read it read it and put it in your mind read it and put it in your mind the first tunnel is sale of running business sale of running business plus 24 months holding period last 24 months okay the second tunnel is sale of shares 5% holding you are doing job in that company and the last 24 months holding 24 months holding of shares now what is the lifetime limit what is the lifetime limit of badr lifetime limit is only 1 million gains in your in your in your life in your life you can only claim badr business asset disposal relief of on 1 million gains once you have once you have claimed 1 million gains 1 million gains badr then you are no more eligible for badr that finish whatever conditions you meet then whatever conditions you meet you are not eligible now you are not eligible so 1 million is the limit don't forget so for example listen look at me for example in a, in an exam question for example in an exam question if they say you in an exam question if they say you that you have already used 800000 you have already claimed 800000 BADR in past, so that means you have only two hundred thousand limit left. You have only two hundred thousand, two hundred thousand pounds of gains of limit left. So use accordingly. Use accordingly. Don't forget. And those who are old students, those who are old students studying right now, they must know in previous fiscal years this limit was ten million. In previous fiscal year, this limit was ten million. Okay. Now, what is the claim date? What is the claim date? for 2021 gains for 20 for example you have badr you are going to claim you have a qualifying gain in 2021 fiscal year in 2021 fiscal year so for this relief you the claim date is 31st january 2023 don't forget this claims date don't forget to learn these claims date for 2021 fiscal year if you have a qualifying gain in 2021 you can claim you can claim this relief by 31st january 2023 okay now student listen one thing listen one thing there is one problem in this business asset disposal relief open your eyes look at here there is one problem in this business asset disposal relief of shares shares see the shares tunnel see the shares tunnel that you must you must be you, you must have to do job you must have to do job in that company that means internal employees only internal employees can claim this relief one more thing holding 5% is also must holding 5% is also must so the, this is very strict the business asset disposal relief share side is very strict so you know people complain and with respect to time the tax department introduce one more relief that is investor relief investor relief look at here look at here investor relief investor relief this is for external investors you see the words this is for in external investors business asset business asset disposal business asset disposal relief was for internal was for internal investors right those who were the employees of that company those who were the employees of that company right but now see here first of all the first condition if you want to claim investor relief you have done investment in unlisted trading company unlisted trading company this is the first condition subscribe for that is newly issued newly issued now 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 hold hold in this case investor relief you can't buy the shares from the market from the stock exchange you have to subscribe directly from the company you have to take shares directly from the company directly from the company when company issues shares first time you know we call it ipo or something so you have to subscribe shares directly from the company right and what is the date 17 after 17th march 2016 after 17th march 2016 one more thing here the holding period is 3 years you need to hold it 
you need to hold it after 17th March 2016, three years holding period, three years. In that, in that BADR, the holding period is only two years. In BADR, the holding period is 24 months. Here you have holding period must be three years. Three years, that is 36 months. No need to do job. No need to do job. That's why I have written here external investors. For BADR, you must be doing job. But for investor leap, no need to do job. Okay. Same 10% CGT rate will be applied like entrepreneur relief. Entrepreneur relief is no more. Now it's BADR. Now it's BADR. Okay. But a separate 10 million, 10 million lifetime limit is available. Now listen, listen, listen gains qualifying under BADR and investor relief are called QG qualifying gains. I repeat gains qualifying under BADR, BADR and investor relief are basically QG qualifying gains and for qualifying gains, my dear student, the tax rate is the CGT tax rate is flat 10%, flat 10%, flat 10%. Okay. Now the good news is that there is a separate 10 million C there is a separate 10 million lifetime limit, 10 million gains lifetime limit is available for investor relief. So now you use your brain. How much, how much limit is available for BADR? How much limit is available for BADR? How much limit is available for BADR? Only 1 million. For BADR, the limit is only 1 million, for, but for this investor relief, but for this investor relief, the limit is 10 million gains, 10 million gains. Okay, just have a look, take your time. Now, we are, listen, open your eyes. We are on the topic business relief. We are on the topic business relief. First of all, keep one thing in mind. The objective of this chapter to improve business activity. The objective of this topic is to improve business activity. So there is one very super hit relief, which we call it rollover relief and frozen gains. Rollover relief and frozen gains. Rollover relief and frozen gains. Listen, the objective of this relief is to reinvest. It is to motivate you for reinvestment. For example, you sold a chargeable asset, chargeable business asset. Look at me. You sold a chargeable business asset and you got a gain. Now tax department tells you that if you reinvestment this proceed, if you reinvest that proceed in another business asset, then this gain, the existing gain will be deferred. You don't need to pay tax on this existing gain, pay tax after many years, after many years. So it's a motivation for you. So it's a motivation for you. So what you have to do, you have, you need to reinvest. What you need to do, you need to reinvest the proceed. You need to reinvest the proceed. And what the tax department will do for you, they will defer your gain. They will defer your gain. So this is an ideal example of win-win. This is an ideal example of win-win, okay? Right. So now, and one more thing you have studied in this chapter, this is frozen gains. Sometimes we do rollover and sometimes we do frozen gains. Listen, listen, close your, what we do in rollover, what we do in rollover, we sell existing asset, we buy a new asset and the gain of existing asset is rollover in the, in the new asset. And what is the working of rollover? The base cost of new asset is reduced base cost of new asset is reduced base cost of new asset is reduced and whenever you reduce the base cost of new asset so automatically the future gain of that asset has increased okay right so right here listen here old asset sold and the new asset bought old asset sold sold and the new asset is bought gain will be rolled over means base cost of new asset new asset will be reduced it's a deferral relief it's a deferral relief it's a deferral leave. Okay. Now, listen, the second thing is frozen gains. Frozen gain is also same. The objective of frozen game and, and rollover is same. See, you have reinvested, you, re, you have reinvested, but now, but in this case, the replacement asset bought is a depreciating asset, but now you are going to reinvest in a depreciating asset. You are going to reinvest in a depreciating asset. 
so now you don't you are not allowed you are not allowed to do roll over you will you will you will freeze your gain you will freeze you will freeze your gain you will freeze your gain you will freeze your gain okay you will freeze no need to reduce the base cost of replacement asset first of all see the workings first of all see these two lines in roll over you need to reduce the base cost of new asset in roll over you need to reduce the base cost of new asset but in frozen gains we never we never we never reduce the base cost of the, we never reduce the base cost of new asset okay please have a look please have a look now for frozen gains for fr in rollover the base cost of new asset is reduced but in frozen gains you just freeze you just underground the frozen gain now the question now the question is now the question is when now the question is when when the, this freezer will get open when this frozen gain will come in this world and will be taxable in future so the frozen gain is taxable on the earliest of these two the frozen gain is taxable on the earliest of these two the first is disposal date of that replacement asset disposal date of that replacement asset the first and the second is 10 years max 10 years second is max 10 years okay so read it read it please in this defil there are two types so first is rollover and the second is frozen gains in rollover in rollover you need to reduce the base cost of replacement asset in frozen gains you you are not supposed to reduce the base cost of replacement asset instead instead you freeze your gain instead you freeze your gain you put your gain in the freezer now the question is that when will this frozen gain will come out of the freezer and will be taxable in future so it will be taxable on the earliest of these two dates on the earliest of these two dates number one disposal date of replacement asset and number two maximum maximum 10 years 10 years these two these two are the dates and you need this this gain will be taxable on the earliest of these two now as a student you may ask sir what is the line of how will how will we recognize that we have to do rollover or we need to do frozen gains how will we recognize listen to me how will we recognize that we need to freeze the gain or we need to roll over we need to roll over the simple answer is that don't look at the old asset look at the replacement asset look at the replacement asset if the replacement asset is a non depreciating asset if the replacement asset is a non depreciating asset then do roll over do roll over but if the replacement asset is a depreciating asset then you need, then you need to freeze the gain when you need to freeze the gain then you need to freeze the gain then you need to freeze the gain now as a student you may ask sir what is depreciating asset in our course in our f6 course what are the depreciating asset only two only two depreciating asset you need to learn the first one is plant and machinery the first one is plant and machinery and the second one is leasehold property with lease term less than fixed 60 years uh, first one is plant and machinery and the second one is leasehold property with lease term 60 years or less so simple in simple terms if you find these two assets as a replacement asset then then do frozen gains working and if you find other than assets other than these two then simply go for rollover then simply go for rollover okay read the summary students please read, read the summary
this is the summary for rollover for rollover for roll over for rollover the replacement asset must be non depreciating base cost of re replacement asset will be reduced for frozen gains for frozen gains replacement asset must be depreciating and now there is no reduction in base cost of the new asset one question if what if the useful life it doesn't matter it doesn't matter only you need to che check the life of leasehold now there is one more business relief which we call which we call it which we call gift relief which we call gift relief okay gift relief listen first of all keep one thing in mind there are the, what some there are some relationship which we call connected person like dad son grandson daughter sister brother these are these are connected person these are connected person listen so when we are dealing when we are dealing with connected person so because of blood relationship because of blood relationship sometimes sometimes we sell them for less than less than market value we sell them for less than market value but what tax department says tax department says if you are dealing even if you are dealing with connected person so whenever listen to me this is the basic rule whenever one chargeable asset is transferred from one guy from dad to son from dad to son so dad needs to calculate the father needs to calculate the gain and in the gain computation open your eyes and in the gain computation market value is used as a dp market value is used as a dp all of you please write it in for connected person for connected person if the deal is not at the market value if the sale is not at the market value still you need to compute the gain still you need to calculate the gain and instead of dp you will be using market value instead of dp you will be using market value okay so now listen let me let me solve one question for you for example dad bought dad bought an asset for 10 dad bought an asset for 10 and now the market value of this asset is 50 and dad give the son this asset for free the consideration is zero the consideration is zero okay so it's a pure gift it's a pure gift now doesn't matter it's a pure gift but whenever a chargeable asset is transferred from one person to another the guy who is transferring have to, has to calculate the gain has to calculate the gain so now for computation of gain market value market value is used as a dp so dp is 50 and what is the cost 10 so gain is 40 gain is 40 now let us say both dad and son dad and son they sign they did election to hold over this gain under the gift leave so what they will do they will write less gift leave 40 now dad does not need to pay any tax now dad does not need to pay any tax now now the question is sir is this gain is forgiven for the whole for good is this gain forgiven for the good no 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 it's just a deferral it's just a deferral son needs to pay tax on future son needs to pay tax in future so now we need to calculate base cost of asset for son base cost of asset for son listen son got the asset with market value of 50 less how much is the gift leave 40 so the base cost of asset for son is 10 now just use your brain when the base cost for son has been reduced so automatically the future gain automatically the future gain future gain of son will be increased future gain of on this transaction for the son will be increased and this is what we call deferral deferral this is not a permanent permanent this is not a permanent forgiveness this is just a deferral this is just a deferral now wait as a student you may ask sir why tax department has given this relief many objectives first of all i will show you the conditions of this relief there must be business this asset this re relief is related to business assets this relief is related to business asset so because of this relief now the businesses will be transferred from one generation to another so this this will give young blood to the business so now dad can easily transfer the business the business to their son so automatically it's it means alignment of interest between the family and you don't need to pay tax 
so this is the first advantage the second advantage the person who is giving the gift the person who is giving the gift does not have to bear any does not have to bear any tax burden because already that dad is giving the gift and the third point there is no cash in, involved there is no cash open your eyes there is no cash is involved in this transaction so when there is no cash is involved in the transaction how can dad pay the tax dad does not have cash to pay the tax so it's better to defer it it's better to defer it these are the few arguments now listen these are the conditions these are the conditions for gift leave these are the conditions for gift leave first of all business asset in the hand of donor for example dad is giving a warehouse a factory so the donor the dad is the donor he must be using he must be using that asset for business purpose okay the second area is shares if dad is giving shares then if it is unlisted company's shares if it is unlisted company's shares then no holding percentage is required if it is unlisted unquoted unlisted unquoted unlisted unquoted company shares then no holding percentage is required but if it is for quoted company's shares 5% holding by donor is must 5% do holding by donor is must and you know there are many questions in your exam kit and past papers in which in which dad is transferring dad is transferring shares to son but the holding percentage is only 1% or 2% so you have to write that no gift leave is available okay so for quoted companies open your eyes for gift leave quoted companies you must have to check the holding percentage but for unquoted or unlisted companies unquoted or unlisted companies shares you don't need to check any 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 holding percentage any holding percentage okay right one more thing i would like to share here look at here for example one more case you can cover here for example if it is written there is a consideration involved if there is a consideration involved look at here for example dad bought the asset for 10 and when the market value of this after few years the market value of this asset is 50 but dad sold it for 15 15 okay so now first of all whenever a chargeable asset whenever a chargeable asset is transferred whenever a chargeable asset is transferred from one guy to another guy so the guy who is transferring the guy who is transferring the asset will have to compute the gain will have to compute the gain so for connected person dp is equal to market value dp is equal to market value okay so dp is 50 cost is 10 so the gain is how much gain is 40 now listen listen now the cash is involved so now you need to calculate the gift leave so just take out the gift transaction how much gift how much gift element is there in this transaction how much gift element is there in this transaction so the market value is 50 and consideration 15 so 35 is the gift element so now only gift leave will be restricted to 35 gift leave will be restricted to 35 so automatically your final your final chargeable gain this is your final chargeable gain for dad final chargeable gain for dad is 5 final chargeable gain of for dad is 5 okay now listen is this 35 a permanent it's is this 35 a permanent relief no it's a deferral leave and now how to do how to defer it by reducing the base cost for son so simply deduct it from here the base cost will be 15 the base cost will be 15 have a look okay please check now how to compute market value of quoted shares sometimes what what happens first of all use your brain whenever there is a transaction between connected person whenever there is a transaction between connected person for gain calculation you need to use the market value for gain calculation you need to use the market value instead of dp this is the normal thing so what if 
what if dad gifted quoted company shares to son dad gifted quoted company shares to son so in that case in that case you need in that case yes i'll share yes i'll share the slides somebody is asking for the in this session and i'll share the slides on the whatsapp group don't worry just join the whatsapp group listen for example dad gifted quoted company's shares to son so now we need to calculate the dp in the transaction and dp is the market value dp is the market value so you must know how to calculate the market value of quoted shares how to calculate the market value of quoted shares it's very easy on each and every day if you have a little knowledge of stock exchange on each and every day and you get the quoted price you get the highest and lowest quoted price you get the highest and lowest quoted price at the end of each day you get the highest and lowest quoted price at the end of each day so what is the market value market value is the mid quoted price market value is the mid quoted price see for example your lowest quoted price is 10 and the highest is 12 so 10 plus 12 divided by 2 11 this is the mid very simple very simple whenever you need need to calculate the market value of quoted shares it's the mid price now very interesting topic ppr principal private residence pr principal private residence relief now wait tax department knows that we all are human beings human we are human human and this is the this is the very basic need of human that is shelter so we all need one home we, we all need one house so the law is if you buy one house one house with the intention of living and you live it and you live inside it so automatically when you sell it there is no tax there is no cdt okay so one house one house is allowed one residential house is in needs okay so if you buy it and you use it for residential use then relief possible okay so first of all how you'll get the relief of ppr whenever you buy and you use it you buy and you use it you live it you live it you live inside it you get relief now one special topic here tax department is deemed period of occupation deemed period of occupation means tax department knows that you are human being tax department knows that you are human being and human beings we human beings sometimes leaves our residential home sometimes because we need to go to vacations we need to go for studies we need to go for jobs at abroad at other cities other countries okay so these are the human needs so tax department has given a very special relief deemed period of occupation deem period of occupation means you are physically absent you are physically absent absent from your house but tax department will consider that you are actually living that you are actually present inside the house okay so these are the three points for deem period number a 36 months 36 months without any reason 36 months go anywhere without any reason nobody will ask nobody will dare to ask dare to ask okay number b any period unlimited time of employment working abroad if you are going abroad for job if you are going abroad for job so you need to go for three four five six years any number of years you will get the relief then number c maximum 48 months in point c the relief is only 48 months of working elsewhere working elsewhere in uk working elsewhere in uk that is employed plus self-employed employed plus self-employed now student may ask one question listen listen don't sleep the student may ask one question listen sir sir what is the difference between point b and c what is the difference between point b and c oh listen listen in point b in point b uh there is no time limit there is no time limit you can go for seven eight years but in point c if you go for seven years still you will get get only four years relief four years relief okay the first thing number two in point b you need to go abroad you need to go abroad outside uk in point c in point c you can you can work in uk as well in point c you can work in uk as well the third difference in point b you need to go for job employed employed taxpayer but in point c you can go for business plus job business as well as for job okay so these are the difference so a b c are deemed period of occupation deemed period of occupation means you are absent you are physically absent from your house but tax department will consider you that you are present okay but now listen 
deem period relief is only available when sandwich when there is a sandwich for deem period sandwich is must look look at the video for deem period relief sandwich is must sandwich means you are already living in the house before and after that absence period you are actually living in that house before and after before and after that period before and after that absence period okay so sandwich is must sandwich is must okay now one one more thing one more leaf last nine months are always exam last nine months are always exam for example in each and every question this is the routine thing always highlight the the disposal date always in each and every question listen student always highlight the disposal date always highlight the disposal date always highlight the disposal date right okay and from the disposal date the last nine months are always exam whether you are living whether you are not living whether there is a sandwich or not anything if you are not living even it's exam last nine months are always exam last nine months are always exam okay so just to summarize just to summarize listen if you are living in your house the living period is always exam if you are going out of your house because of this abc if you are leaving your house if you are absent from your house because of abc and there is a sandwich then also exam last nine months are all, all, always exam last nine months are always exam okay these all are exam period the other periods are chargeable the other periods are chargeable period the other periods are chargeable period now one more relief which we call it letting relief one more relief which we call it letting relief and yes there is a change there is a change there is a change there is a change one question sorry wait yes yes if you want to claim last nine months relief in your life once in a once in a life you use that house yes yes definitely once in a life but in the last nine months you don't need to present in your house in the last nine months if you are absent still you will get the relief now listen letting relief there is a change there is a change in 2021 with this letting relief those who have studied this previously in previous fiscal years it was different now it is different now it is different oh, different okay now now letting relief is only available now letting relief is only available listen 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 this is the only case that this is your house this is your house and you are 60% this house is occupied and 40% of the house is rented 60% of your house is occupied and 40% of your house is rented that means you are still present in this house the owner is still the landlord the owner is still present in the house and the rest of the house is rented then you are only eligible for letting leave then you are only eligible for letting leave this is the new this is the new law previously it was different previously it was different previously it was possible that you left your house you left your house and you rent it you you go to switzerland you go to anywhere france and you and you let your house you were eligible for uh, for letting leave but now you are not eligible for letting leave if you leave your house you must be present in your house and you have for example you let the 50 percent 60 40 30 percent of your house okay so this is the condition now now letting leave only available see these lines letting leave only available if letting is done during chargeable absence period plus owner is also living in in the same property owner is also living in the same property then letting relief is available 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 don't forget okay this is the only case see this sketch see this sketch this is the only case of letting leave so don't even think about letting leave if you have left the house and the house is rented then no letting relief is available now previously yes it was available now it's not available please take care listen so what you do if you 
definitely you have done this course before. So these are the three columns in PPR, the total months, exempt months and chargeable months, months. total months, exempt months and chargeable months. How you calculate PPR? Simply the formula of PPR is gain multiplied by exempt months divided by total months. Gain multiplied by exempt months divided by total months, exempt months divided by total months. Okay. Now, how letting relief is calculated? Letting relief is calculated as the lowest of these three. Number one, simply copy paste the PPR in the question. Simply copy paste the PPR in the question. Then gain attributable to this chargeable absence period. Gain attributable to the chargeable absence period. And the third number is max 40,000. These three numbers you need to calculate. These three numbers, my students, my dear students, you need to calculate. And whatever is the lowest amount, whatever is the lowest amount, this will be your letting relief. This will be your letting relief, okay? But don't forget, letting relief now is only available when the landlord is also present in the house and some portion of the house is rented. Some portion of the house is rented. Don't forget this thing, okay? Now, final format, final format of PPR, the full flash question of PPR, full flash question of PPR comes like this. This is the final calculation. First of all, you will write the disposal proceed of that house. First of all, you will write the disposal proceed of that house. First of all, you will write the disposal proceed. Then you will subtract the cost. Then you will subtract, subtract the cost. So you will get gain before PPR. You will get gain before PPR, gain before PPR. Okay. Now you will deduct. Now you will be deducting. Now you will be deducting. Listen. Listen. Gain you will be deducting ppr what is the formula of ppr gain multiplied by exempt months divided by total months okay once you will deduct the ppr you will get gain after ppr you will get gain after ppr listen to me uh, gain after ppr you will apply breaks and then you will relax you will relax and you will think listen to me then you will relax and you will think you will think that whether the letting relief is available or not whether the letting relief is available or not and now the letting relief is only available when when the landlord is present in the house and some portion is rented. Some portion is rented. Some portion is rented. Then you will be calculating letting relief. And then the formula of letting relief is the lowest of these three. The lowest of this, these three, one, two, and three. You will deduct it and then you will get the final gain. You will deduct it. And then you will get the final gain. Some wait. some portion of the house wait there yes 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 listen the answer uh, listen there is a possibility in the question that there is only ppr but no letting relief yes if you if you are not present in the house if you if you are not present in the house with letting then no letting relief is available but yes ppr is available so you will stop the question here there are many questions in your exam kit in which only PPR is available. Only PPR is available. Yes, this final gain means chargeable gain. This obviously this final gain means chargeable gain. And after this chargeable gain, you need to deduct. After this chargeable gain, you need to deduct annual exemption. After this chargeable gain, you need to deduct annual exemption. Okay, that's common sense. So look at it. Look at look at the look at the big picture. This is the big picture. Final format of PPR question. Final, final, full and final complete format of PPR. Now, there is a topic which we call it capital losses, capital losses. Listen, 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 very simple. When you subtract, if you take the difference of DP less cost, if you take the difference DP less cost, sometimes you get gain and sometimes you get loss. Sometimes you get loss. So whenever you get gain, you need to pay tax. And whenever you get capital loss, you get the relief, you get the relief. So now what are the reliefs? The first read the rule number one. For example, in the same fiscal year, you have a gain and you have a loss. You have a chargeable gain and you have a chargeable loss. So now 
this same period chargeable loss will simply deduct will simply cancel out your chargeable gain without your permission without your permission and there is no planning inside it there is no planning inside it that means this may waste your this may waste your annual exemption this may waste your annual exemption this may waste your annual exemption repeat same period capital loss same period chargeable gain no planning simply simply net off simply net off without any without any thinking but yes if you have some unused capital loss in one fiscal year you will carry forward it you will carry forward it and yes what we do any unused capital loss will be carried forward against future gains now rule number 3 for capital loss this period if if i'm going to carry forward the loss for this period then for the next period it's brought forward so for brought forward capital loss there is a planning and brought forward capital losses should be used in such a way brought forward capital losses should be used in such a way that that annual exemption is not wasted now now you need to do planning for annual exemption now you need to do planning for annual exemption you should not waste your annual exemption okay so i repeat for the year capital loss same period capital loss no planning no planning no planning without your permission it will cancel the gain but if you have brought forward capital loss you have the planning option you have the planning option you should not waste your annual exemption then okay be very careful now something really new in your course total new area in this course this is the new area see the even the writing is changed new area new area listen 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 i will try to give you maximum idea but if, i hope you won't sleep listen for example listen after this part i'll give you a break after this part please give me 5 minutes energy energy i i need your energy i need your energy please don't sleep you have your paper i don't have paper you have the paper you have to clear in the first attempt listen this is your fiscal year 6th april 2020 to 5th april 21 in the fiscal year see see these are the month in june 20 you have a capital loss of 5000 and then august 20 you have a rpg residential property gain of 30000 then in december 20 you have capital loss of 8000 listen now there is a new requirement for rpg for rpg you need to do payment on account that means for rpg you need to pay tax immediately for rpg you need to pay tax immediately listen to me normal cgt for normal cgt the self assessment due date is for normal cgt the tax tax self assessment due date is after the end of the fiscal year 31st january for example for 2021 listen to me listen to me for 2021 fiscal year the cgt due date normal cgt due date is 31st january 2022 this is the due date for balancing payment this is the due date for balancing payment this is normal this is normal okay but according to new rules some new rules if you have rpg in any month if you have rpg residential property gain so you need to calculate tax for that rpg you need to calculate tax for that rpg and you need to pay the tax immediately payment on account immediately within 30 days you need to pay a payment on account within 30 days and how you need to calculate listen this is your rpg see see this this is your rpg you need to consider all losses before that date you need to consider all losses before that date plus brought forward losses as well so for example you have rpg 30000 listen you have capital loss till that date is 5000 now as a student you may ask sir what about this loss what about this loss my my innocent my innocent student this loss belongs to december 2020 this will arise afterwards so in the month till the month of august till the month of august this gain has not been arised till the month of august this gain has not yet been arised so how can you predict this loss okay so for the calculation of payment on account for the calculation of payment on account you need to take rpg rpg definitely because you are calculating payment on account on rpg and all previous losses plus annual exemption as well annual exemption as well okay now you will get the taxable gain whatever taxable gain it is you will apply the 18% and this is your payment on account this is your payment on account the payment on account like like you call it 
you pay advanced tax you pay advanced tax on it this is the extra working this is the this is the extra working so for this payment on account open your eyes for this payment on account you will write rpg and all the previous capital losses till that date brought forward plus for the year losses till that date you will deduct also you will deduct the annual exemption and then you will calculate poa payment on account and this need to be paid within 30 days this need to be paid within 30 days done this is the first thing now what is the second thing listen to me what is the second step after the year end when you will when the whole fiscal year will be ended now you will calculate the normal taxes whatever normal taxes i taught you normal tax you know the normal cdt calculation after that you will be doing normal cdt calculation and for example this payment on account is 600 listen this payment on account is 600 and after doing normal cdt calculation your total cdt comes out to be 1000 your total cdt comes out to be 1000 so now you will think like that listen your to total cdt is 1000 your total cdt is 1000 but you have already paid 600 your total cdt is 1000 but you have already paid 600 through payment on account so now you will pay the remaining 400 on 31st january 2022 you will pay the remaining 6 400 on 31st january 2022 right take your time wait and read it read it check it Please read these lines. Please read, read it, read it, read it. My dear student, please read it for the calculation of POA for the calculation of POA RPG. You need, you need to account for annual exemption capital losses before disposal of RPG and capital losses brought forward. See the notes capital losses incurred after RPG date must be ignored, must be ignored for POA for POA calculation purpose. See, I've written all, all this in notes now, now at the end, see the red pen. Now at the year end, you need to compute CGT from scratch from zero means from scratch and finally compute total CGT. Then subtract POA from total CGT. You will get the CGT payable or CGT receivable CGT payable or CGT receivable. This is the, this is the new thing. This is the new thing of your course. And this is the, this is present in examiner article as well. This is present in examiner article as well. In my normal class, I have discussed that article questions that article question as well in my normal class i have discussed that article question as well you guys can read it you guys can read it from the article but i have given you good idea now now we are taking a five minutes break okay because al almost uh, one and a half hour we have studied we are taking a five or six seven minutes break and after that we'll join okay so don't lose your energy just eat something and come back thank you Okay, we are starting class. Now, the next topic is chattels. Chattels means 
tangible, tangible, which can be touched, movable property like this pen, this phone is chattel, right? This cup, this cup is chattel, right? Plates, chattel, uh, paintings, chattels, jewelries, your watch, your rings, these all are bracelets, these all are chattels, right? Okay, now what is the treatment of chattels? There are two types of chattels. The first one is was wasting chattels and second one is non-wasting chattels. Wasting chattels are chattels with expected life. Expected life less than 50 years, less than 50 years. Like our cell phone and all these electronic items, these are wasting chattels, these are wasting chattels. Now, what are the rules for wasting chattels? Normally, wasting chattels are exempt. Wasting chattels are exempt. That means if you buy it and sell it, no CDT. If you buy it and then sell it, no CDT. But they are taxable only. They are taxable only if used in business and capital loans is claimed. If you are using it in business and you are claiming capital loans, then it is taxable, then it is chargeable. Otherwise, it is exempt. Otherwise, it is exempt. So wasting chattels are exempt. Normally, they are exempt. They are only chargeable. They are only taxable if they are used in business and capital losses are claimed. The second, the real topic is non-wasting chattels. Obviously, now student may ask, sir, what is the definition of non-wasting chattels? Listen, when the wasting chattels, when the wasting chattels means life less than 50 years, so non-wasting chattels are ex with expected life more than 50 years, more than means antique items, mean antique items, okay, right? So for non-wasting chattels, there are four special cases. For non-wasting chattels, there are four special, special cases, okay? Now, these are the cases, look at here. Case number one, if cost less than six, and DP less than six, no gain, no loss, do nothing. If if the cost of that non-wasting chattel is less than six and DP is also disposal proceed is less than six, do nothing. No gain, no loss. You, you don't need to do, do anything, just leave it. Case two, if cost greater than six and DP greater than six, then normal CGT calculation, whatever I've taught you. For example, you bought a non-wasting chattel for 8,000. You bought a non-wasting chattel for 8,000 and you sold it for 10,000. You bought a non-wasting chattel for eight and you sold it for 10. So the difference of eight and 10, it's 2,000 gain. Very simple, normal working now. Case three and case four are special cases. Case three and case four are special cases. Case three, if cost less than six and DP greater than six, then chargeable gain will be the lower of these two. The first thing is do normal working. First of all, do normal gain calculation on one side and on the other side, write gross DP minus 6,000, fix 6,000 into 5.3. Gross DP minus 6,000 into 5.3. I repeat, for case three, case three is a special case cost less than six and DP greater than six, then you need to do two workings. For case three, you need to do two workings. Number one, first of all, you need to calculate normal gain the way we calculate the normal gain, okay? And the second working is see this formula, gross DP, less 6,000 times 513. Whichever answer is lower answer will be your chargeable gain, okay? This is for case three. And case four is the case of loss. Case four is the case of loss. What is the case? If cost greater than six and DP less than six. If cost greater than six and DP less than six, then any capital loss will be computed using deemed DP of 6,000. Means you are not supposed to use actual DP now. You have to use assumed DP of 6,000, but yes, cost will be actual, cost will be actual. And now you will get the capital loss and this loss is only allowed. You can get relief on this loss, okay, right? In case four. So in case four, I repeat again, you are not supposed to use actual DP. You have to use assumed or deemed DP. You have to use assumed or deemed DP, right? Now, important point. This is very important point. Examiner never uses the word chattels. If you see all the past strippers, exam kit, they never use the word chattels they just give the name like paintings like jewelries like chairs so you need to recognize it's a tangible movable property this is the first thing they never ever use the word chattels okay right so you need to recognize yourself and one more thing if your examiner is silent if your examiner is not saying anything about wasting and non-wasting chattel then you should assume it as a non-wasting chattel as a non-wasting chattel and in that case apply these four cases Normally, we apply these four cases. Normally, we apply this 
four cases. Normally we apply these four cases, okay? Okay. Now transfer of chargeable asset between married couples and civil partners. Married couples and civil partners. If a chargeable asset is transferred between married couples and civil partner, what is the implication? Look at here. For example, uh, Mr. A bought an asset for 10. Mr. A bought an asset for 10. Now Mr. A transferred this asset to his wife when the market value was 50. Now this transaction this this transaction is no gain no loss no gain no loss whether mr a sold to wife give it free to wife it's purely no gain no loss transaction and how it becomes no gain no loss listen no gain no loss means gain or loss zero look at me no gain no loss means gain or loss is zero gain or loss is zero no gain no loss means gain or loss is zero gain or loss is zero right okay and how come gain or loss is zero when dp and cost is same when dp and cost is same so you should assume that mr a transferred sold it for 10 the same cost so whatever is the cost of mr a will be the cost of mrs a whatever is the cost of mr a will be the cost of mrs a it is assumed that mr a transferred this asset to his wife on cost on cost because now DP is 10 and cost is 10, so automatically gain or loss is zero, right? Now, finally, finally, Mrs. A sold this to third party. Mrs. A sold this, sold this to third party for 80. Now, what will be the gain in the books? What will be the gain in the books of Mrs. A? It's 70. The 70 is the gain in the books of Mrs. A. So please read this. These, these are very important rules. These are between married couples and civil partners. Any transaction is no gain, no loss. It is assumed that it's a cost to cost transfer. It's a cost to cost transfer. Cost to cost transfer means whatever is the cost of husband becomes the cost of wife. Whatever is the cost for husband, it becomes the cost for wife, okay? Now again, very important line. Transfer of chargeable asset at the time of death. Transfer of chargeable asset at the time of death is exempt from CGT and market value of asset at the time of death becomes base cost of asset for son, base cost of asset for son. For example, listen, for example, dad bought an asset for 10, dad bought an asset for 10, and the asset market value is going up, 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 and up, and now the market value is 70. Market value is 70, and now that this is the death of the dad. This is the date of death of dad. Okay, so now according to the will, according to the will, the asset is transferred to son. So this appreciation, look at here, this $60 gain is exempt, totally exempt, totally exempt. Nobody will pay tax. Nobody will pay tax on this 60, right? And now this market value at the date of death, market value, please, please listen carefully. Market value at the date of death will be the base cost for son will be base cost for son and when son will sell this asset in future so if son sells it for 90 son sells it for 90 so only 20 gain 20 dollar gain is taxable only 20 pounds or 20 dollars gain is taxable on son okay so yes there is one question you transfer it to anybody at the time of death it's a no gain no loss it's a no gain no loss okay so transfer of chargeable asset at the time of death means after death no cgt implications and the base cost and the market value of that asset will be the base cost for the donor for the base cost of asset for donor means son in this case okay now giving you one very practical practical working for all this look at here this is very interesting see i have written the heading interesting interesting this is interesting topic listen this is grandfather grandfather bought grandfather bought an asset for 10 pounds grandfather bought an asset for 10 pounds and first of all grandfather transferred this asset to grandma the wife of grandfather when the market value was 50 when the market value was 50 now listen student don't sleep grandfather and grandma are both husband wife 
grandfather and grandma are both husband wife so the transaction between husband wife is no gain no loss the transaction between husband wife is no gain no gain no loss so this is the no gain listen no gain no loss and the the base the cost of husband becomes the cost for wife so so for grandma the cost is 10 pounds okay so the grandfather and grandma husband wife and in husband wife there is no gain no loss transaction okay and the cost for grandfather becomes a cost for grandma now listen 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 grandma kept this asset for 3 4 5 years and he and she died and she died at the time of at the time of her death at the time of her death the market value of this asset is 80 at the time of grandma's death the market value of this asset is 80 but when we opened the will of grandma it was written in that will that this asset should be transferred to grandson so at the time of at the time at the time of death this asset is transferred to grandson now use your brain now use your brain at the time of death there is no cdd implication at the time of death there is no cdd implication and listen market value market value at the date of death market value of this asset at the date of death will become the base cost for son will become the base cost for son so see now the asset is finally transferred to grandson asset is finally transferred to grandson now what grandson did after a few days grandson transferred this asset to his wife to his wife now again the transaction husband wife transaction husband wife transaction is no gain no loss husband wife transaction is no gain no loss so automatically whatever is the cost of this asset for husband the the same cost is used for wife the cost of this asset for husband is 80 the cost of this asset for husband is 80 so automatically the cost for wife is 80 right now finally in the question it was written that wife sold this asset to third party for 250 so can you tell me what is the final gain what is the final gain dp for wife is 250 cost is 80 so the final gain is 170 final gain is 170 students the final gain is 170 the final gain is 170 okay you got it students in this in this example we re we revise not only the husband wife transfer but also the death transfer the death transfer as well now there is one more area for individuals the shares and security sometimes individuals buy shares and then they sell it then they sell sell it listen very carefully whenever whenever an individual sells shares we need to yes shares are also chargeable asset yes shares are also chargeable asset so how do we calculate the gain of shares for example 10000 shares are sold so definitely when you sell 10000 shares the disposal proceed is also given so first of all you write the dp first of all you write the dp now obviously to in order to calculate gain in order to calculate gain you need to match the cost you need to match the cost you need to match the cost okay so with dp you will match the cost with dp you will match the cost and now what is the order what is the order for matching the cost so you need to apply these matching order rules you need to apply apply student these matching order rules what is the matching order rules what are matching order rules this is the priority first of all you need you need to see whether is there any same day purchase if there is any same day purchase you need to write the cost of same day here then you need to check following 30 days following 30 days from the disposal date you need to deduct that cost and then finally finally you need to take cost from shares pool you need to take cost of shares from pool from pool okay uh somebody is asking within 9 days no that's for companies that for companies that's a separate thing please don't mix don't mix please this is for individuals this is for individuals okay so my dear students always remember this thing always always remember think th this thing whenever you are going to compute gain or loss gain or loss for 
individuals shares and securities if individual is selling shares and securities you need to use this order first of all you will write dp and then for cost and then for cost there are three steps for and then for cost there are three steps number one same day purchase number one same day purchase number two following 30 days purchase and then shares from cost of shares from pool okay now how to incorporate right issue and bonus issue height how to incorporate right issue and bonus issue listen very carefully this is x company this is x company and my name is mr a and i am the shareholder of this company this is x company and let us say i have i have bought some shares of this x company few years ago so when i have bought some shares of this x company few years ago that means mr a is the existing shareholder of x company so now whenever x company will issue right issue whenever x company will offer right issue this right issue will be offered to mr a this right issue will be offered to mr a now listen i know right issue is a different word for us in accounting terminologies but what is right issue here for mr a listen to my words for mr a right issue is nothing for mr a as a shareholder right issue is nothing but a normal purchase of shares for cash because right issue is a cash issue right issue is a cash issue for so what is right issue for mr a for a normal shareholder for a normal shareholder right issue is normal purchase of shares for cash normal purchase of shares for cash so whenever we buy shares for cash we update our pool how see existing i had 10000 shares existing i had 10000 shares like already i bought 10000 shares for 20000 now for example there is a 2 for 5 right issue see the screen there is a 2 for 5 2 for 5 2 for 5 means 40% 2 for 5 means 40% now can you apply 40% on 10000 yes so that means i have bought 4000 shares and for example the price of this 4000 shares is 4 pound per share 4 pound per share so 4000 into 4 pounds is 16000 pounds okay so in this way whenever whenever there is a right issue in the question whenever there is a right issue in the question just simply think like that right issue for a shareholder for a normal shareholder right issue is nothing right issue is nothing but simply purchase of shares for cash purchase of shares for cash and whenever we buy shares for cash we'll update our pool both columns the shares column as well as the cost column okay this is the treatment of right issue now student listen to me what should be the treatment of bonus issue come on tell me what should be the treatment of bonus issue what should be the treatment of bonus issue we all know bonus issue is a free issue bonus issue is a free issue so if the bonus issue is written in the question if the bonus issue is written in the question so you just need to update the shares column and you you just simply write, need to write the dash you need to leave the cost column so only shares column will be updated only shares column will be updated students only shares column will be updated okay so that's the implication now there is one area which we call it paper to paper takeover there is one area which we call it paper to paper takeover this is the last area after this i'll be shifting after this i'll be shifting i'll be shifting to the questions to the questions okay so get ready so get ready please paper to paper takeover what is the story listen this guy is mr a this person is mr a listen mr a purchased 10000 ordinary shares of x company of x company this is x company see mr a purchased 10000 ordinary shares of x company for 40000 pounds 3 years ago mr a purchased 10000 ordinary shares of x company for 40000 pounds few years ago few years ago okay now today what happened today y company y company is planning to take over x company y company is planning to take over x company and we all know when y company wants to take over x company so y company needs the ordinary shares y company needs ordinary shares of x company so y company gave the this offer see this is the offer y company gave this offer to all shareholders y company gave this offer to all shareholders of x company what is the offer listen listen what is the offer 
if you give one ordinary share of x company if you give one ordinary share of x company you will immediately get get two ordinary shares of y company and one preference shares of y company so if you if you if you have if you have brain if you have brain you can think like that you can think like that listen 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 that for one ordinary share of x company for one ordinary share of x company you will get total three shares for one ordinary shares of x company you will get total three shares wait a minute for one ordinary shares of x company you will get total for for one ordinary share of x company you will be getting total three shares so it's a pure share exchange it's a pure share exchange now Mr. A, Mr. A immediately called tax department. That do I need to pay any tax? Tax department said no. You don't need to pay any tax because you didn't receive any cash. You didn't receive any cash. This is pure share exchange. This is pure share exchange. You didn't realize anything. You didn't receive any cash. So it's pure share exchange. Okay. So now, how many shares Mr. X, Mr. A received? How many new shares Mr. A received? So see, one for two for ordinary shares. One for two. One for two. That means double. So Mr. A already had Mr. A already had already had ten thousand ten thousand ordinary shares. So double of ten thousand is twenty thousand. So Mr. A received Mr. A received twenty thousand ordinary shares of Y company. And what is the deal for preference? One for one. What is the deal for preference? It's one for one. So Mr. A received ten thousand. Mr. A received ten thousand preference shares. Mr. A received ten. Thousand preference shares of Y company. Ten thousand preference shares of Y company. Right? Okay. Now, just listen. We need to do one thing. We don't need to pay any tax now. We don't need to pay any tax now. No. But yes, the tax department advised us to to calculate the base cost. To calculate the base cost of these two. To calculate the base cost of these two. I said, why? Why we do, we need to calculate the base cost? So they they explained us. Listen. Previously. Previously, we only had only one class of share that is ordinary. Previously, we had only one class of share that is ordinary. But now we gave away our ordinary shares, and now we have two different classes of shares. Now we have two different classes of shares. So when we have two different of classes of shares, so definitely we need to make two different pools. Definitely we need to make two different pools. And for making two different pools, we we must have separate cost. We must have separate cost. So that means. This original cost of forty thousand. This original cost of forty thousand must be apportioned between these two. Must be apportioned between these two. Between these two, ordinary and preference. Yes, and you know, for apportionment, we need a base. For apportionment, we know all know we need a base. And here, the base is the market price. Base is basically market values or market price of shares of Y company. Market price of shares of Y company at the date of takeover. At the date of takeover. See at the top of the question. See there. What is the market price of ordinary share per ordinary share at four pounds? So twenty thousand ordinary shares we have multiplied by four. It's eighty thousand pounds. Okay, and the market price per preference shares is pound two. So it's ten thousand times pound two is twenty thousand. Can you calculate it? Yes. Total market value is. Hundred thousand, and this hundred thousand is equal to hundred percent. This hundred thousand is equal to hundred percent. Can you calculate the percentage? Can you calculate the percentage weightage? Yes. Eighty thousand is how much percentage of hundred thousand? Eighty thousand is how much percent of hundred thousand? It's eighty percent, and twenty thousand is twenty percent of hundred thousand. So the percentages, percentage weightage according to market value is eighty twenty eighty twenty. So now what we will do? Listen. You will split. You will split here. You will write eighty percent. What is eighty percent of forty thousand? It's thirty-two thousand pound. See here. See here, please. This is basically base cost of twenty thousand ordinary shares of Y company. And now wait. Twenty percent, forty thousand times twenty percent is eight thousand. And student, this is going to be base 
cost of ten thousand preference shares of Y company. Okay, so see we have just split. We have just done split. We have just split these this original cost. We have just split this original cost on the basis of market value. We have just split the this the original cost between ordinary and preference between ordinary and preference on the basis of market value on the basis of market value percentage right okay now as a student as a student you may think as a student you may think sir what is the need of this split what is the need of this split a student just think there is a possibility in future we sell these shares separately there is a possibility in future we sell ordinary shares separately and preference shares separately. So when you will sell these two shares separately, definitely you will compute gain separately. Definitely you will compute the gain of these two separately. And for the computation of separate gain, for the computation of separate gain, you need separate cost. <laughs> for the computation of separate gain, you need separate cost. That's why you have calculated separate cost. That's why you have calculated student separate cost here. That's why you have calculated separate cost for these two. That's why you have calculated separate cost for these two. Okay, so students, 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 now we are finally moving towards the OT cases. Finally, we are moving towards the OT, OT cases, OT cases part. Okay, so our first question you can see on the screen. Our first question, please, please, please don't sleep, don't sleep. It's for your benefit. It's for your benefit, please. Uh, 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 the first question is go. This is basically a past paper. You are trainee accountant. You are trainee accountant and your manager has asked for your help regarding a client who disposed of the assets during the tax year 2021, during the tax year 2021. Okay. Now on 31st July, 2020, this is the date. This is the disposal date. Bo made a gift, gift, gift. So automatically gift leaf will come in your mind. Gift leaf will come in your mind. Please, please, please to his son. She of his entire holding of 50,000 pound one ordinary shares, 100% holding, 100% holding he gifted in Bortune Limited, an unquoted trading company. Yes, it's the shares of trading company. So we have seen all conditions have been met. Now listen, as this is unquoted company, we are discussing gift leaf. As this is unquoted, unquoted company, so we don't need to check holding percentage. Yes. Yes, for quoted companies, 5% is must. Yes, for quoted companies, 5% is must. But for unquoted companies, there is no need of 5%. Okay, please don't sleep. Just think you are attempting a question now. The market value of the shares on that date was 210,000. Okay, so the cost, the cost is 50,000. The cost is, 50, sorry, wait. Market value, the shares had been purchased by Bo on 22nd January 94,000. So yes, the cost is 94 and this is the market value. The cost is market value, the cost is 94 and the market value is 210. Bo and Chi have elected, have elected to hold over the gain as a gift of a business asset. Yes, gift relief is also called holdover relief. Gift relief is also called hold over relief hold over relief hold over relief hold over relief gift relief is also called hold over relief okay so you need to calculate gift relief you need to calculate gift relief now don't start don't read just stop these four lines are enough these four lines are enough and listen 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 the case cost is how much 94 listen listen and the market value is 210, consideration is zero. Consideration is zero. In the first case, it's a pure gift. In the first case, 
it's a pure gift it's a pure gift okay so now listen whenever whenever asset is transferred from whenever any chargeable asset is transferred from one person to another whenever any chargeable asset is transferred from one person to another gain is calculated and for gain for connected person dp is market value is used as a dp market value is used as a dpc so dp is dp is 210 cost is 94 cost is 94 your gain is 116 your gain is 116 dp is 210 Cost is ninety four. Your gain is one one six. Okay. Now, as this is a pure gift transaction, as there is no consideration involved, consideration is zero. Full time gift. It's a pure gift. So you will you will be able to claim complete giftly. You will be able to get complete giftly. Complete one one six thousand will be deferred. Complete one one six thousand will be deferred. Complete one one six thousand will be deferred. Okay. Because the consideration right now is zero. Consideration right now is zero. Okay. Now, student, you need to calculate base cost of shares for Sun. Now, just use your brain. Is this a complete? Is this a permanent relief or a deferral? Gift relief is just a deferral relief. Gift relief is just a deferral relief. And how we do working for deferral? We simply reduce the base cost of these shares for Sun. So now, the market value of these shares were two ten. And how much is the gift relief? How much is the gift relief? It's one one six. Gift relief is one one six. So automatically, the base cost of shares for Sun is ninety four. The base cost of shares for Sun is ninety four. Okay, the base cost of shares for Sun is ninety four. This is the answer of first question. This is the answer of first question. Listen, if you want to see the question with you, you can keep your exam kit. It's in your exam kit as well. It's in your Kaplan exam kit as well. You can keep your Kaplan exam kit in front of you. Now next, next part. See what is the cheese base cost of fifty thousand ordinary shares in Bottigan Limited? Answer is ninety four. A question number one. Answer is ninety four. Question number one. Answer is ninety four thousand. Right. Now, see, they are going to change the requirement. If Bo, requirement number two. If lead the requirement. If Bo had instead sold the shares in Bottigan Limited for one sixty. Now see. the consideration is involved consideration consideration is involved for each of the following statements select whether it is true or false wait wait listen now the cost is again 94 okay see here the market value is again 210 but in the question it is given that consideration by sun is 160 okay so can you see how much is the gift element now how much is the gift element students please check how much is the gift element 210 minus 160 only 50000 is the gift element only 50000 is the gift element only 50000 is the gift element when only 50000 is the gift element so you can only defer you can only get gift relief up to the gift element you can only get Gift relief up to the gift element. That's it. Nothing else. Okay. So now for question number two again, again as this is a deal between connected person, market values must be used as a DP. So DP is two ten. Cost is ninety four. Gain is one one six. Gain is one one six. Now as in this question, this transaction is not a pure gift. This transaction is not a pure gift. So in this case, the consideration is involved. So you can only Get gift relief up to the amount of gift. So amount of gift is only fifty thousand. So fifty thousand is your gift relief. So finally your gain gain immediately chargeable for dad. Gain immediately chargeable for dad is sixty six thousand. Now what should be the base cost? Now what should be the base cost for son? Market value is two ten. And how much is the gift relief now? It's fifty thousand. So base cost is automatically. One sixty. This is the solution for second question, and let me now read the true and false thing. Let me now read the true and false thing.
Now listen, 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 listen. See this. Bo's chargeable gain would be would have been sixty six. It's yes, final chargeable gain is sixty six. It's true. It's in this case, in the second case, the final chargeable gain is sixty six. Bo and Chi would not have been no, no, no. It's false. Still they can claim. Still they can claim gift leave, but only for fifty thousand. Still they can claim gift leave, but only for fifty thousand. So this one is wrong. The base cost of the shares for Chi would be no. It should be one sixty. It should be one sixty. Again, it's wrong. So the first one is true. The second and third is false. The second and third is false. The second and third is false. Okay. Have a look. Have a look, please. Please don't lose the confidence. Now, like next, when is the capital gain tax due date for tax year twenty twenty one? Hold. Very simple. It's very simple. You have studied the self assessment chapter, and still you know this. Now you are on the end of the paper time is very near. You know CGT is always paid through balancing payment. CGT is always paid through balancing payment. So now for twenty twenty one fiscal year, for twenty twenty one fiscal year, for twenty twenty one fiscal year, for twenty twenty one fiscal year. CDT due date is thirty first January twenty twenty two. CDT due date is thirty first January twenty twenty two. First thing and one second. By what date must Bo and she make the election? Election election date. Election date to hold over the gain on the Bottium Limited shares. To hold over the gain on Bottium Limited shares, it should be listen 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 listen. This is a separate thing. For election of election of gift leave is 4 years from the end of the fiscal year 4 years from the end of the fiscal year go slow our fiscal year ends on 5th april 2021 our fiscal year ends on 5th april 2021 please add 4 years add 4 years so from 5th april 2021 if you add 4 years it's 5th april 2025 okay so this is the answer so where the matrix meets this 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 see this this block 31st January 2022 is the CGT due date, and the claims due date is 5th April 2025. So this is the answer. We have done three MCQs. We have done three MCQs so far. We have done three MCQs so far. Number now now read the question again. Read the question again. Bo has read the question again from here. From here, students, please. Bo has taxable income in the tax year of thirty thousand five hundred. Taxable income means non-saving interest dividend. Taxable income means NS interest dividend is thirty thirty thousand five hundred, and made a chargeable gain on the sale of painting. Painting painting means it's not RPG. It's not a property. It's not BADR or QG, so it's NG. The gain of painting is normal gain, normal gain. It's not, it's not RPG or QG. It's NG. So twenty thousand seven hundred is your gain. Bo has never made any other chargeable disposal. What does it mean? Bo has never made any other chargeable disposal. That means his annual exemption is also free. So you need, you are required to use the annual exemption as well. You are required to use annual exemption as well. Okay. Now, just with these two lines, I'm going to calculate tax. With these these two lines, with these two lines, I'm going to calculate the tax. I'm going going to calculate the tax. Students, please look at me. Listen, 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 listen. Assuming that no other chargeable gain arises in the tax year, how much capital gain tax would Bo pay on the disposal of painting? Listen to me. Listen to me. The gain of painting is twenty thousand seven hundred. There is no other gain. That means annual exemption is free. So we'll use annual exemption here, twelve thousand three hundred. Now please help me, help me. Twenty thousand seven hundred less twelve thousand three hundred. Twenty thousand seven hundred less twelve thousand three hundred. How much is this? It's eighty four hundred something. How much is this? Yes, it's eighty four hundred. 
it's 8400 is your taxable gain 8400 is your taxable gain okay and yes this is normal gain ng okay now listen now let's use let's let's interact with brands bands your normal band is 0 to 0 to 37500 so the capacity of your normal band is 37500 and in the question it was written that your already your non saving interest taxable income your non saving interest dividend taxable income is 30500 so when your taxable income is 30500 that means your first band has already been used up to some extent so from 37500 less 3500 you have unused band of 77000 you have unused band of 7000 and yes this unused band this unused band can be used for cdt now, how much is the CGT? Your CGT is 8,400. Your CGT is 8,400. So what you will do, listen to me. You will pick up this CGT and you will knock the first band. You will pick up this, this gain, yes, this gain of 8,400. You will pick up this gain of 8,400 and you will knock the first band. So only 7,000 7, capacity is available. Only 7,000 capacity is available. So you will write 7,000 times 10%. Sir, why did you write 10%? Because for normal gain, for normal gain, the first band rate is 10%. Okay, so now out of 8400, you have calculated tax of 7000. Now the remaining 14 for remaining 1400, the tax rate should be 20%. So it's 280. So I think it's 980 is your CGT. 980 is your CGT. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. 980 is your CGT. 980 is your CGT. Take your time, take your time, take your time, please. 980 is your CGT. 980 is your CGT. Now, answer is 980. Now the last part is related to PPR. Last part is related linked to is linked to PPR principal private residence relief. Okay, on 30th September 2020, this is both sold. This is the disposal date of the house for 282, resulting in a chargeable gain of 172. Thank God they have given you ready-made chargeable gain. They have given you ready-made chargeable gain. Now read the story. The house had all had been purchased on 1st October 08. Now hold. House bought house was bought on 1st October 08 and it was sold on 30th September 2020. House was bought on 1st October 08 and it was sold on 30th September 2020. This is the total holding period. Now, he occupied the house as his main residence from the date of purchase until 30th September 2010. Until 30 from 1st October 08, from 1st October 08 to 30th September 20, 2010, it was fully occupied. It was fully occupied, so this period is exempt. This first 24 months is exempt. This first 24 months is exempt. Listen, Bo then moved in with his girlfriend and the house was unoccupied between 1st October 2010 to 30th September 2020. See, he didn't come back. Once he left the house, he didn't come back. So there is no sandwich layer. There is no sandwich layer in the end. That's why in this question, you can't claim ABC. In this question, you can't claim A, B, C, D in period of occupation because there is no sandwich because he didn't come back. But yes, but yes, last nine months relief is always available. Yes, last nine months relief is always available. Last nine months relief is always there. Last nine months relief is always available to you. Last nine months relief is always available to you, right? last nine months relief is always available to you okay now let's make let's make the let's make the sketch listen to me listen to me this is the sketch listen to me it's very easy from first october 08 to first october 010 first october 010 or 30th september 010 is same so first 24 months this is apo APO means actual period of occupation. APO means actual period of occupation. And as you are living in the house, it's exempt. 
as you have bought the house for residence purpose and you are living so it's exempt is it's exempt it's exempt it's exempt right okay so first 24 months first 24 months you will put see this first 24 months you will put as an exempt right then from 1st october 10 to 30th september 20 continuous absence period from 1st october 10 to 30th september 20 continuous absence period so it must be chargeable but yes 30th september 2020 is the disposal date you will calculate the last you will separate the last nine months you will be separating the last nine months you will be separating this last nine months these are also exempt last nine months are also exempt this this last nine months is exempt okay so what is the chargeable area from this area listen to me from this area to this area hope you can do your counting yourself these are one 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 months okay 111 months these 111 months these 111 months are these 111 months are chargeable months these 111 months are chargeable months okay so now finally you can add them up you can add them up your total months are 24 plus 9 plus 111 is 144 33 33 months are exempt and triple one months are chargeable triple one months are chargeable months okay total months 144 33 months 33 months are exempt and triple one triple one months are chargeable months okay take your time take your time no need to rush take your time take your time take your time please have a look now they are saying how much principal just ppr principal residence relief is available how much residence relief is available listen no need to write dp and cost no i know the format we all know the format first of all we write the dp then we write the cost and the difference of dp and cost is gain but luckily luckily examiner has ready made given us the gain see this see this see this see this examiner has ready made given us this gain see this gain 172000 is the gain examiner has ready made given us the gain open your eyes check it out check it out examiner has ready made given us the gain so what we'll do we'll write gain and what is the formula of ppr gain multiply by gain multiply by exempt months divided by total months gain multiply by exempt months divided by total months can anybody of you calculate the ppr it's 39417. 39417 or 39416. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what they ask you. That's what they ask you. That's what they ask you. This is 39417. This is straight away 39417 is your PPR. 39417 is your PPR. 39417 is your PPR. And your answer is C your answer is c your answer is c please check it out Now let's move to one more question, Alphabet Limited. One more question, the name of this question is Alphabet Limited, Alphabet Limited. This contains BADR as well. This contain, contains business asset disposal relief previously, which we, we used to call it entrepreneur relief, okay? Don't sleep, only half an hour is left. Last half an hour hard work is left, okay? Now, on 15th October, 2020, on 15th of October, 2020, Alphabet Limited and unquoted trading company was taken over by XYZ PLC. Alphabetic company was taken over by XYZ PLC. XYZ PLC. Use make a picture in your mind. Make a picture sketch in your mind. Prior to the takeover, Alphabet Limited share capital consisted of hundred thousand ordinary shares. Okay, so total number of shares issued by Alphabetic Limited was only hundred thousand shares. Was only hundred thousand shares, right? And under the terms of the takeover, under the terms of the takeover, the shareholder received either 
कैश ऑफ सिक्स पाउंड पर शेयर सिक्स पाउंड पर शेयर और वन ऑर्डनरी शेयर इन एक्स वाई जेड फॉर वन वन फॉर वन वन फॉर वन सी द डील इधर यू कैन गेट सिक्स पाउंड पर शेयर कैश फॉर एवरी शेयर फॉर ईच एंड एवरी शेयर ऑफ alphabetic limited they will give you the parent company the parent company that is xyz company will give you 6 pound per share cash either take the cash or you will be receiving one for one x share exchange one for one one for one one for one share exchange it's your wish okay it's totally your wish now the following information is available regarding three share holdings of alphabetic alphabetic limited the existing company the subsidiary company the subsidiary existing company has total has already issued only 100000 shares and these are the three main shareholders three alloy bond and cherry alloy bond and cherry now now you need to decide whether they can claim badr or not you need to decide whether they can claim b a d r or not b a d r or not okay it's not difficult just don't sleep be active read carefully you will get it you will get it now alloy has been alloy has been managing director yes he is doing job of alphabet limited since since the company's incorporation on 1st january since years he is doing job since years he is doing job okay now she accepted xyz plc cash alternative that means that means sold cash alternative means sold she he received alloy received cash alloy received cash it's pure sold in respect of a share holding of 60000 60000 out of 100000 60000 means 60% holding 60% is greater than 5% yes badr conditions have been met we can see 60% holding alloy had originally subscribed for 50000 shares at their par value par value is pound 1 par value is pound 1 and purchase a further 10000 shares for 18600 that means how did he buy these 60000 shares student look at me how did he buy these 60000 shares first of all he bought 50000 shares from company at par value and par value is 1 so 50000 times 1 the cost of these 50000 shares is 50000 and then after one year after one year or so in 2011 he bought 10000 more shares for 18600 pounds now listen 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 you know constantly he bought the shares of same company and same class of shares he bought the same 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 shares of alphabetic limited and same ordinary so you know we make the pool for such for such purchases for such purchases we make the pool for such purchases we make the pool first of all in 2010 2010 he bought 50000 shares for 50000 pounds and then in 2011 he bought 10000 shares for 18600 pounds so now listen to me now he has he has total 60000 shares with cost of 68600 pounds he has total 60000 shares with the cost of 68600 pounds i am using i am doing this just for future gain purposes for the calculation of future gain purposes okay right now one thing all of you all of you please tell me can alloy can alloy claim badr yes alloy can claim badr why he is doing job in that in this company yes this company is a trading company yes he has share holding of more than 5% yes and he hold the shares for 10 years means more than 2 years more than just 2 years 24 months so as he met the as he met all condition he is eligible for badr he is eligible for badr he is eligible for badr right now the next guy is born the next guy is born listen born has been born has been the sales director of alphabet limited since 1st feb 2019 1 Feb 2019. Bon has been the sales director of Alphabet Limited since 1st Feb 2019. 1st Feb 2019. Having not previously been an employee of the company, see he joined the company on 1st Feb 19 as the director. She accepted XYZ PLC share alternative of one for one ordinary share. Of her twenty five thousand, yes, holding is good. Holding is good. He has twenty five percent. He has twenty five percent. He has twenty five 
25% share holding. He has 25% share holding. Bond had purchased her share holding on 1st Feb 2019 for 92,200. Now, on 4th of March, on 4th of March 2021, Bond gave 10,000 of her 10,000 of her ordinary shares in XYZ PLC to her brother for 50,000 pounds. This is a separate story. Wait, first of all, listen, this is 1st Feb February 20, 2019. And when did you when did you get this deal? Listen, 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 listen. This deal happened on this deal happened on 15th October 2020. See, almost one and a half years. See the holding of holding of alphabet limited shares is only one and a half year or so not 24 months this bond did not complete bond did not complete complete 24 months holding period so that's why so that's why bond bond is not qualified for bdr bond is not qualified for bdr okay bond cannot claim bdr because 24 months is must see bond bond bought the shares Bond bought the shares on 1st February 2019, but he got, but he left these shares. He left these shares on 15th October 2020. So only one and a half year, max one and a half year holding, not complete 24 months holding. So he is not eligible for BADR. Don't, for, don't forget. Okay. Now come to the third guy, Cherry. Skip this paragraph. Skip this paragraph. I'll, I'll, I'll do this paragraph. Don't worry. I'll do it. Don't worry. It's about next requirement. Cherry has been employee of Alphabet Limited since 1st May 2011, many years. She accept, accepted XYZ PLC share alternative of one for one ordinary of her three, oh, oh 3,000. Now tell me, only 3% shareholding. He has only 3% shareholding. 3,000 is just 3% 3 of 100,000. 3000 is just 3% that means he is not meeting he is not uh, cherry is not cherry is not going to qualify for in BADR cherry is not going to qualify for BADR okay now hold let's do let's do the first first mcq first mcq which of the following which of the following individuals met the qualifying conditions for business asset disposal relief business asset disposal relief business asset disposal relief yes Alloy, these two didn't meet. Alloy met this condition. Alloy met the condition, but, 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 but these two, Bon and Cherry did not meet. And I told you the reason why. I told you the reason why, okay? Please check it, please check it. Now, what is the chargeable gain, if any, arising on alloy? First of all, alloy. What is the what is the chargeable what is the chargeable gain, if any, if any, arising on alloy on the takeover of Alphabetic Limited? Yes, yes, yes. Alloy, alloy received C. Alloy accepted the cash alternative. See, it is written. Wait. See, this is, he accepted, he accepted the cash alternative. That means he sold the shares. He sold all the 60,000 shares and he took the cash from XYZ PLC. Means it's a pure sale. It's a pure sale of shares. Okay. So Alloy had, look at here, Alloy had 60,000 shares. And for these 60,000 shares, he received six pounds per share. For these 60,000 shares of ABC, he received six pound per share. So 60,000 times six is 360. 60,000 times six is 360. Now, less cost. You will, you will ask me, sir, as Alloy is selling shares. So will you apply matching order rules? Yes, apply it. There is no same day purchase. There is no same day purchase. There is no following 30 days. So automatically, automatically we'll take, we'll take cost from this pool. We'll take cost from this pool. And what is the cost of 60,000 shares from the pool? What is the cost of 60,000 shares from this pool? This is 68,600. This is 68,600. So 
so when you deduct the cost you will get 291400 so 291400 is the gain 291400 is the gain okay 291400 is the gain Two nine one four hundred is the gain. Okay. Now next born. Born had twenty five thousand shares of previous. Listen to me. Born had twenty five thousand shares of previous KBC. and he opted for share exchange he opted for share exchange so he gave away listen to me he gave away 25000 shares of abc he got the shares of xyz now he had xyz shares okay simple pure share exchange one for one one for one with same cost see the cost is still 92 200 see this is the cost now finally what he did on 4th march 2021 born gave 10000 of her Pound one ordinary shares in XYZ PLC to her brother. Connected person deal between connected person deal between connected person. Look at here, deal between connected person. So whenever there is a deal between connected person, yes we compute gain. Yes we calculate gain. But for this gain, DP is the market value. For this gain, DP is the market value. And now, as the, as the, listen, as the. shares are quoted company shares so for quoted company shares i taught you mid market price for quoted company shares the co the they are mid market there is one question students are asking listen let me give you the answer please please be active students this is 1st february 2019 and this date is 15th october 2020 so you need to check the holding period for abc ABC, ABC, ABC holding period is less than ABC holding period is less than twenty four months. That's why Bond did not qualify for BADR. Listen, they were doing job in ABC. They were doing job in ABC. They had holding in ABC. So we need to check the holding period of ABC definitely. And in ABC, the holding of Bond <coughs> holding period. is less than 24 months okay now so out of this 15000 he gave away 10000 shares out of this 25000 shares he gave away 25 10000 shares and now as these this as this is as this is the deal of quoted shares so in order to calculate the market value you need to calculate mid quoted price mid quoted price student can you see how can we, how will you calculate the mid quoted price 7.10 and 7.18 7.10 and 7.18 what is the mid price 7.10 and 7.18 what is the mid price it's 7.14 okay so let's calculate the gain let's calculate this gain let's calculate this gain let's calculate this gain listen to me he gave away 10000 shares and what is the market value of one share is 7.14 so automatically dp is 71400 automatically dp is 71400 now as you just as he just gave 10000 shares but he already had 25000 shares he already had 25000 shares what is the base cost of 25000 shares it's 92200 so what he will do 92200 divided by 25000 multiply by multiply by 10000 now calculate the cost now calculate the cost tell me what is the cost what is the cost can anybody tell me yes 36 okay so the difference will be your gain 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 3534520 is your gain 34520 is your gain Take your time. Now, point number three. Point number three. 
Cherry, Cherry had three thousand shares. Cherry had yes. Duration of job must also be twenty four months. Duration of job must also be at least twenty four months. Yes. Cherry has been an employee since first May two thousand eleven. She accepted X Y Z PLC share alternative. That means one for one. So she gave away three thousand shares of A B C and she got three thousand shares of X Y Z. But yes, holding is less than five percent. Holding is less than five percent. So no, no more B A D R. No more B A D R. Now, Cherry had purchased the share holding. This is the base cost. This is the base cost. This is the base cost. Don't forget. Now, on thirteenth November twenty twenty, Cherry sold one thousand shares. Offer shares in a for sixty six hundred for sixty six hundred. He sold it for sixty six hundred one thousand shares. Okay. Now Cherry died on fifty fifth April twenty twenty one, and her remaining two thousand shares, ordinary shares in X Y Z PLC were inherited by her daughter. On that date, these shares were valued at fifteen thousand six hundred. Do you know this case of death? Do you remember the case of death? I told you at the time of death. at the time of death if you transfer any chargeable asset no no more cdt application no cdt application no cdt application and your market values market value at the date of death market value at the date of death will be market value of these shares at the date of that will be the base cost for daughter will be the base cost of shares for daughter right remember okay so now let's calculate how, what they are asking read this requirement now listen Point number three: What is the chargeable gain on the disposal of shares? This is already we have done. How much? What is the answer of this? Three, four, five, two, zero. Yes. Now, by what date must bond pay any capital gain tax due as a result of the disposal of shares? You know, can you tell me for twenty twenty one? For twenty twenty one fiscal year, what is the what is the due date of CGT? What is the due date? Yes, very good, very good answer. Thirty first January twenty twenty two for twenty twenty one fiscal year the due date is thirty first January twenty twenty two. Now what is the last requirement? What is the allowable cost that will be used by Cherry's daughter in the capital gain tax computation on a subsequent disposal of her inherited shares? You remember? Listen, listen, listen. For transfers at the time of death. Market value of the asset at the time of death will be treated as base cost for daughter. Simple. So, at the time of at the time of Cherry's death, what was the market value? What was the market value of those two thousand shares? What was the market value of those two thousand shares? Fifteen six hundred. So automatically, that market value that market value will, will be treated as base cost for this daughter. And when in future. When in future this daughter will sell these shares, these this base cost of fifteen thousand six hundred will be used. So answer is A. Answer is A. Very simple. Answer is A. Very simple. Okay, right. So students, I hope you understood all these things. I hope you understood all these things. So that's it for today's class. And stay in touch in the WhatsApp group. Okay, I'll send you more classes. I'll send you more classes, and we'll. tell you the schedule of remaining classes on the whatsapp group okay and we'll share the slides with you as well so it's time to say goodbye take care